Prowler, Zane, and Jaden versus Camula. Turns out, vampires exist in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe, and one of them duels against three high-caliber duelists in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX series. Sadly, the wins that Camula gets are tainted by some out of duel shenanigans that she does. She spies on the opponent's decks using her bats, she uses forbidden broken cards, and worst of all, she uses bystanders as collateral damage for some of the cards that she plays. Spoilers though, in the end, she is defeated. But the spooky question then becomes, could Crowler or Zane have finished her off in their duels, with some minor changes to their gameplay. Or perhaps could Camula have beaten Jaden in their final duel if she played slightly different? We're not going to know until we analyse these duels, so let's jump in. The duel begins and Camula goes first. Her opening hand consists of Zombie Werewolf, Vampire Bat, Vampire Lord, Zombie Bed, and two mysterious cards. They will never be seen and will never be used. Keep these two cards in mind because we'll, we'll talk about it more later, but it's frustrating. Two mysterious cards. You've got it? Okay, back to the duel. Camilla starts by summoning her zombie werewolf into attack. She sets her zombie bed trap face down and ends her turn. Straight away, we have our first out of duel shenanigan, and that is the set trap zombie bed. You see, Camula is playing this card as a means to hard counter one of Crowler's strategies. Through spying on him, through her bats, he learned that he likes to use heavy storm to wipe out back row, preferably in combination with his statue of the wicked traps. The same play that he did against Jaden, basically. All we can really say here is, shame on you Camula for cheating, that's it, that's all we've got. Anyway, it's Crowler's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Ancient Gear Soldier, Ancient Gear Beast, Ancient Gear Castle, Damage Condenser, and would you believe it, two mysterious cards that we'll never see throughout this entire duel. Don't worry about these two too much. It's frustrating, I know, but two mysterious cards, what are you gonna do? Crowler starts by activating his continuous spell, Ancient Gear Castle. Now, while it is face up on the field, all Ancient Gear monsters he controls will gain 300 attack, and whenever he normal summons or sets an Ancient Gear monster, the castle will gain a counter. Crowler can use this card and the counters to act as a tribute for an Ancient Gear monster, with the total counters acting as the total amounts of tributes. Crowler summons his Ancient Gear Soldier, its attack increases and Ancient Gear Castle gains its first counter. Prowler attacks. Due to the archetypal effect of Ancient Gear monsters, spells and traps can't be activated in response to their attacks. And so, Prowler believes Camula can't activate her set trap. But little does he know. Zombie Werewolf is destroyed and Camula takes the first damage of the duel. Zombie Werewolf's effect then activates, special summoning another of itself from the deck albeit with 500 extra attack. Crowler ends his turn by setting Damage Condenser face down. It's Camula's turn, and she draws Book of Life. She summons Vampire Bat. Due to its effect, all zombie monsters gain 200 attack while it's on the field. Camula enters her battle phase and attacks and destroys Ancient Gear Soldier. Vampire Bat then attacks directly. After this, Crowler plays his Damage Condenser. This allows him to special summon a monster from his deck with attack equal to or less than the damage he's took this turn. Since Crowler took 1300 damage total, he summons another Ancient Gear Soldier from his deck. Camula ends her turn. Quick ruling fact, Camula couldn't use Book of Life here because there has to be a monster in Crowler's graveyard for her to banish in order to activate its effect. So that is why Camula didn't bring back one of her zombie werewolves. It's Crowler's turn and he draws. He gets Heavy Storm. He tributes his Ancient Gear Soldier to summon Ancient Gear Beasts. Ancient Gear Castle gains a second counter and Ancient Gear Beast gains 300 attack. Crowler enters his battle phase and attacks Zombie Werewolf. It is destroyed. Due to the effect of Ancient Gear Beast, Zombie Werewolf is unable to activate its effect after it is destroyed by battle. And so, Camula can't summon her final Zombie Werewolf. Crowler, with no further plays, ends his turn. Note, Crowler could have tributed his continuous spell to summon his Ancient Gear Beast. This way he would have Ancient Gear Beast and his Ancient Gear Soldier on the field to attack twice with. It didn't really matter though, 
because of the play that Camelot is about to do during the next turn. In fact, had he done this, even though we'd have had more monsters on the board, would have done a little bit more damage and would have depleted Camelot's resources a little bit more, he would have lost even quicker in the duel. So good job he didn't do that play. And there was nothing else he could have done, so it's fine. It's back to Camula, and she draws her field spell, Infernal Vania. She activates it. The crowd notes that this is a forbidden field spell card. Banned, some would say. Infernal Vania makes it so, during each player's main phase, they can discard a zombie-type monster. By doing this, they can destroy all monsters on the field. The player that uses this effect will be unable to normal summon or set that turn. Camula immediately activates its effect, discarding her Vampire Lord to nuke the field. However, by using the second effect of her Vampire Bat, she can keep it alive by sending a copy of itself from her deck to the grave. With an empty field, Vampire Bat attacks. Camula ends her turn. But hang on a second, Camula. With Book of Life in your hand, you could have won right here. Activate Book of Life, banish whatever you want from Crowler's Grave, bring back the Vampire Lord. Vampire Lord would have like 2,200 attack on the field. Attack directly. That's game right there. Why didn't she do this? I have no idea. It's Crowler's turn, and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws and gets his ace monster, Ancient Gear Golem. He summons it by tributing his Ancient Gear Castle, which has two counters on it. Crowler enters his battle phase and uses Ancient Gear Golem to destroy Vampire Bat. Camula sends another Vampire Bat from her deck to the grave to prevent its destruction. Crowler, afraid that next turn Infernal Vania will destroy his Ancient Gear Golem, he moves into his main phase too and activates Heavy Storm to destroy all spells and traps on the field. While this play does remove the Forbidden Field spell, it also destroys Camula's set Zombie Bed. With the trap sprung, due to its effect, it special summons a level 4 or lower zombie monster from Camula's deck. She summons her final zombie werewolf. Crowler, despite having two cards still in his hand, has no further plays. And so, ends his turn. It's Camula's turn, and the final turn of the duel. She draws and gets her ace monster, Vampire Genesis. She starts by activating her Book of Life. With its effect, she can special summon a zombie monster from her grave. She summons Vampire Lord. However, to do this, she also needs to banish a monster in Crowlers. She banishes his Ancient Gear Beast. Next, Camula banishes Vampire Lord from the field to special summon Vampire Genesis. Vampire Genesis's attack is increased thanks to Vampire Bats. With this attack boost, Camula has enough attack on the field to win the duel. And so, she attacks and destroys Ancient Gear Golem. She then attacks directly with Zombie Werewolf and Vampire Bat, winning her the duel. Crowler loses. This is a pretty open and shut case. Crowler, with the cards that we see him have, couldn't have won this duel. He just wasn't given enough stuff to do enough. Of course, I will defend Crowler. Camula did spy on his deck and did technically cheat, but... Zombie Bed, it's not the most hard countering card in all the world, is it? I feel like Crowler should have been able to play around this, and unfortunately, Crowler lost legit. Anyway, on to duel number two. The duel begins, and Camula makes the mistake of going first. Against Zane, this is not normally a good idea. She draws, and her opening hand consists of Vampire Lady, Vampire Lord, Zombie Werewolf, Red Ghost Moon, and would you believe it? Two mysterious cards that we will never see, never use, and just won't be. This is gonna happen again. Foreshadowing. Camula summons her Vampire Lady into defense. She sets her trap, Red Ghost Moon face down, and ends her turn. It's Zane's turn, and he draws. His opening hand consists of Cyber Dragon, Cyber Dragon, another Cyber Dragon, Power Bond, Defusion and Attack Reflector Unit. Zane immediately activates his Power Bond, fusing his three Cyber Dragons together to make his ultimate boss monster, Cyber End Dragon. And due to the fusion spell's effect, it doubles its original attack. With an 8,000 attack point monster that does piercing battle damage, Zane attacks Vampire Lady, attempting to go for game. However, Camula activates her set Red Ghost Moon. Now, by discarding one card, she can gain life points equal to the attack 
of Cyber End Dragon, and then end the battle phase. She discards Zombie Werewolf. However, Zane chains his defusion to return Cyber End Dragon back into the extra deck and then resummon its materials back to the field. He summons them into attack. And here is where things get a little bit weird. Bastion states that since Cyber End Dragon is no longer on the field, the effect of Red Ghost Moon will fizzle because it has lost its target. And so, Camulet doesn't gain life points, but it appears as if Zane's battle phase still ends. Zane moves into his main phase two, sets attack reflector unit face down, ends his turn, and as he does, due to the anime effect of power bond, since Cyber End Dragon is no longer on the field during his end phase, Zane doesn't take damage equal to its attack. Now, the issue with this play is that Red Ghost Moon, well, it doesn't target in its card description. And so, this isn't how the effect should play out. I went on Twitter to get some better opinions than my own on this scenario, and a bunch of you gave some great insight. However, I'm gonna use Smooth Pickle's eloquent answer because I thought it was the best. Well, with this scenario, the chain will resolve backwards. So, Zane summons his Cyber Dragons, and then if any of them are in attack, Camula can pick one of them to gain life points, and then the battle phase will end. So what should have happened is Camula should have gained 2100 life points since there was a Cyber Dragon on the field in the tap position. Then the battle phase should have ended. However, Pickle continues. Saying that though, if Zane had summoned his three monsters into defense, then Camula couldn't pick a target to gain life points with. And so the battle phase wouldn't have ended. The reason the battle phase ends in one scenario and not the other is because the effect reads, then end the battle phase. Then in Yu-Gi-Oh means the first effect has to happen for the second effect to happen. So in this case, if Camula doesn't gain life points by picking an attack position monster, then the battle phase doesn't end. Hope that clears things up a little bit and I hope you learned a little something from that as well. So that is a ruling error in this duel. And just for a bit of clarity as well, sometimes in the translation of cards from the Japanese to the English, sometimes they get it wrong, sometimes. If we say that Bastion was correct and that card did target Cyber End Dragon, it used the word target in its card effect, then that would mean Zane could have won this turn since the effect would have completely fizzled. The target was gone. Zane could have attacked with all three of his Cyber Dragons. This would have resulted in game right there and then. So I'll pose the question to all of you. Should Zane have won this turn or should Gamula have gained 2100 life points? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, getting back to the duel, it's Camula's turn, and she draws her ace, Vampire Genesis. She tributes her Vampire Lady to summon Vampire Lord. She then banishes Vampire Lord to special summon Vampire Genesis. Camula uses Vampire Genesis to attack one of the Cyber Dragons. However, Zane activates his attack reflector unit to tribute one of his Cyber Dragons to summon Cyber Barrier Dragon from his deck. He summons it into attack. A replay occurs and Camula attempts to attack again. However, Cyber Barrier Dragon's effect negates the first attack each turn. And so, with no further attacks, Camula ends her turn. It's Zane's turn, and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws and gets Pot of Greed. He activates it and draws Photon Generator Unit and Call of the Haunted. He activates his Photon Generator Unit to tribute two Cyber Dragons to summon his Cyber Laser Dragon from his deck. He then uses its effect to destroy one monster on the field with attack greater than its own. He destroys Vampire Genesis. With nothing left on the field, Zane attacks directly with both of his monsters. Zane ends his turn by setting Call of the Haunted face down. It's Camula's turn, and the final turn of the duel. She draws and gets Illusion Gate. She activates it, and its nutty effect begins. By offering a soul to the Illusion Gate, she can destroy all monsters the opponent controls. Then she can special summon one monster that the opponent has used during the duel, ignoring its summoning conditions. However, the cost to do this is that now, if she loses the duel, she will lose her soul. Camula activates it, but decides, I'm not going to use my soul. I'm going to cheese this restriction. She uses the effect of her shadow charm to offer the soul of Zane's brother in place of her own. Now, should Camula lose the duel, Cyrus's soul will be taken instead. 
Illusion Gate destroys all of Zane's monsters, and she chooses to summon Cyber End Dragon from Zane's extra deck, since it was summoned earlier in the duel. Camula tells Cyber End Dragon to attack Zane directly. Zane contemplates for a moment. He could use his Call of the Haunted to bring back Cyber Barrier Dragon. This would buy him one to two more turns to turn the duel around. He realizes that his deck is capable of this. However, by doing so, his brother will die. And so, without hesitation, Zane throws the duel and doesn't respond. The attack connects, and Camula wins the duel. Now, let's be fair here, it is unclear whether Zane could have made a comeback if he carried on playing. Yes, he could have called the Haunted. Yes, he could have summoned Cyber Barrier Dragon. Yes, he could have negated that attack. But what happens after this? Well, it depends on the next card he drew. That card would decide whether he could win or lose. I mean, there's stuff in his deck that could help him out here. I guess like an Overload Fusion or something like that. If he has his Fortress Dragon by now, maybe. And also he can just switch his monster into defense. Or he could leave his Cyber Barrier Dragon in attack for another turn to tank another attack as long as Camula doesn't draw any more monsters. It's a hard one to say. Oh, and of course, how can we forget? There's two mysterious cards in Camula's hand once again. What are these two cards? This is twice she's done this to us. I don't know. Anyway, on to the final duel. The duel begins and Jaden goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of Elemental Hero Avion, Elemental Hero Sparkman, Elemental Hero Bubbleman, Polymerization, Dark Factory of Mass Production, and Cross Heart. Jaden immediately activates his Polymerization. He fuses Avion, Bubbleman, and Sparkman together to make his Elemental Hero Tempest. Why is he going so all out so quickly using all of his resources? Well, I imagine he wants to end the duel as quick as possible. So that's why he's going in so much so soon. Jaden sets his cross heart trap face down and ends his turn. It's Camula's turn and she draws. Her opening hand consists of Zombie Werewolf, Vampire Lord, Genesis Crisis, Illusion Gate, and I don't believe this. Two mysterious cards that will never be seen, will never be used, don't know what they are. So I'm going to pose the question to all of you. I know Camula doesn't play that many cards, really. She kind of just has the zombie werewolf, the vampire bats, the vampire lord, um, the vampire genesis, and she's going to play two zombie monsters in this duel as well. But what do you think she had? I don't think they're monsters. So they must have been spells or traps that are just bricks. I have no idea what those could be. So I don't know. I don't know. It's Yeah. Camula immediately activates her illusion gate, attempting to use the soul of one of Jaden's friends as payments. However, Jaden's shadow charm protects them. With no other options, Camula decides to offer her own soul as payment. Now should she lose, she will lose her soul. With the payment complete, illusion gate destroys all of Jaden's monsters and Camula summons Elemental Hero Tempest under her control. Believing she already has game, she summons Zombie Werewolf and enters her battle phase. She attacks first with Elemental Hero Tempest. However, before she can attack with her second monster and win the duel, Jaden plays his trap, Cross Heart. This lets him take control of a monster that has inflicted battle damage to him. He takes back his Elemental Hero Tempest. Camula, unable to get over it, is forced to end her turn. <laughs> I bet she wished she attacked the other way around now. Had she done that, Jaden would have been forced to take the zombie monster instead. And then Camula would have still done damage, destroyed that monster. Camula probably would have won if she just attacked the other way around. Now, can we blame her for this? No, but we also can. If you lived through the Gauze Emissary of Darkness era of Yu-Gi-Oh, Gauze used to be a card that if your opponent attacks you directly, you can special summon it and then summon a token with equal attack to the damage you just took. So if you experience that era, then you know you should always attack with your weaker monsters first and then attack with the stronger monsters. That's what I would have done in that situation. It's not what Camula did. Um, so I don't know. It's not really a misplay, but unlucky. She could have won. It's Jaden's turn and he draws insurance. Jaden immediately enters his battle phase and attacks and destroys zombie werewolf. Since Zombie Werewolf was destroyed by battle, its effect summons another of itself from the deck, albeit with 500 extra attack. Jaden sets his insurance trap face down and ends his turn. Jaden could have used his Dark Factory of Mass Production this turn, added two of his normal monsters from his grave back to his hand. 
You can just simply spark man, use spark man to attack the first monster, then use this fusion monster to attack the second monster. It would have done more damage to Camula, but with Jaden's life points sitting so low at the moment, I kind of see why he didn't do this play. He could have done this and set a monster face down to build his defense. That would have been an option. It's Camilla's turn and she draws Pot of Grease. She activates it to draw two new cards. She gets Giant True Nade and Vampire Genesis. She starts by attributing Zombie Werewolf to summon Vampire Lord. She then banishes Vampire Lord to summon Vampire Genesis. She activates her Genesis Crisis Continuous spell. Now, if she doesn't control Vampire Genesis, this card and all face-up zombie type monsters she controls will be destroyed. However, with it on the field, once per turn, she can add any zombie monster from her deck to her hand. She uses this effect to add Ryukoki from her deck. Now she activates Vampire Genesis effect. She discards one zombie monster to special summon another zombie monster in her grave with a lower level. She discards Ryukoki to special summon zombie werewolf. In fear of Jaden's face down card, she activates giant true nade to return all spells and trap on the field back to the hand. However, unfortunately, she has made the same mistake as Crowler. Camula doesn't notice, but its second effect activates. When it is returned from the field to the hand, Jaden gains 500 life points. And so, when Camula enters her battle phase with the hopes of winning, it is revealed, after all of the attacks, that Jaden still has 300 life points left. Camula, annoyed, moves into her main phase too, and reactivates Genesis Crisis. Since its effect is a soft once per turn, she's able to use its effect again, this time adding Despair from the Dark. It's Jaden's turn and the final turn of the duel. He draws and gets Pot of Greed. He activates it and gets Elemental Hero Bastinatrix and Fusion Gates. Jaden starts by activating his Dark Factory of Mass Production to add two normal monsters in his grave back to his hand. He adds Avion and Sparkman. Jaden then plays his field spell Fusion Gate. Now, while it is on the field, he can fuse by banishing the materials instead. So, Jaden banishes his Avion and Bastinatrix to summon Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. He then banishes Flame Wingman and Sparkman to summon his new shiny Elemental Hero, the Shining Flare Wingman. Camula is shocked because she did not know about this card. This is because Jaden only recently added it. Not to counter Camula's deck. No, no, no. That would be too clever for Jaden. He put it in there because he said the duels were a bit too dark lately. He wanted to brighten things up, so he added a bright monster to his deck. A shining monster. Shining Flare Wingman gains 300 attack for every elemental hero in the grave. Since there are two, Tempest and Bubble Man, Shining Flare Wingman's attack increases to 3,100. It attacks and destroys Vampire Genesis. The second effect of Shining Flare Wingman activates, inflicting damage to Camula equal to the attack of the monster that was destroyed by the battle. With this amount of damage, Camula loses the duel, and due to the cost of her Illusion Gate spell card, her soul is ripped from her body. This act results in the vampire race in Yu-Gi-Oh being no more. Yet again, we have a third duel in a row where there are two mysterious cards. Could they have helped Camula out? We will never know. So I'd love to know what you guys think they are in the comments section below. Let me know what you thought of these duels in the comments section below. And what do you think of Camula as a duelist? I'd love to know your spooky opinions. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Catch you later. Bye, everyone.